כמה כבר עד עכשיו? רגע, רק שנייה. שלושים. אה, אוקיי, טוב. הנה עוד שתי דקות, בסדר? חמישים. כן. Welcome, Jay. אה, הנה ג'יי הלך, אוקיי. אבל הוא במיוט. היי, היי. היי, אוקיי. הכל בסדר. Welcome, Professor Yossi Lesham. So Hi. nice to have you with us, where people are still coming in here, and we're, we'll give people another minute or two to, uh, to uh, come on with us. Yes, okay. To give me a chance to, uh, yeah, please let us know where you're from. Sign up and tell us in the chat where you're from. And if you have um, specific questions to uh, Professor Lesham, you can write them in, uh, in the Q&A. Uh, probably works best. But uh, thank you all for joining us from Norway and Toronto and Beersheba. And as we speak, um, I want to thank our, uh, our board members and our, and our supporters in, uh, in the United States, in Canada, in the UK, in France, all over the world. Uh, appreciate so much uh, everybody's uh, dedication to the cause of nature in Israel and nature preservation and nature rewilding. Uh, it's so it's so important for us to feel the kind of um, the, uh, the support and the identification with the issues that we're going to be talking about from all of you around the globe it makes it very um, makes it very uh, um, it helps it helps us in our work on a regular basis so thank you very much um, thank you Avi and Jericho for our back office tonight uh, and uh, as usual and you uh, Greetings uh, to all of you from all over the world. We'll get going in a minute. Um, welcome, everyone. Had, um, and happy Tu Bishvat. Uh, Today is the, uh, tonight in Israel begins the uh, Israel's uh, in the, the Jewish New Year of Trees. Uh, even though it's Shemitah year, and you may have heard there's been some planting going on in Israel that's received some, uh, some coverage in the uh, international news. I don't know if Yossi is going to talk about that, but maybe we'll get into that in the questions as well, because it's a good question as to why we're tree planting on Shemitah year here in the Jewish state where uh, so much of our lives are governed by uh, Jewish religious law, and uh, usually uh, the JNF abides by the tree planting uh, observation. At least their website says they do. But uh, the rabbis have granted uh, the rabbis have granted um, permission for the tree planting that happened in the Negev over the last week, which has caused some violent conflicts and is currently currently abated. But uh, we'll uh, we shall see where where things off. So okay. Um, I, uh, I guess it is time to introduce Yossi Lesham. Um, professor, thank you very much, everybody, for joining. We're a couple of minutes after the hour. We already have 150 people joining. Still going up, though. Uh, maybe we'll wait another minute or two, um, and uh, we'll get going. We'll have Yossi with us for the next hour. Yossi will speak for 45 minutes or so, and we'll have time to answer some questions. Thank you all so much. It's great to see how many people are here from all over the place. old friends like Sandy uh, and uh, many of our board members are on. Great seeing you all. Um, three minutes after the hour and I guess we'll get going. Uh, welcome, welcome everybody. It's my, my name is Jay Shofit. I'm the Director of Partnerships and Development at SBI uh, here in Israel, coming to you from my home in Tel Aviv. Uh, Professor Lesham, we can see, I think he's uh, out in the desert somewhere overlooking Masada. Uh, I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's an exciting, it's going to be an exciting uh, talk tonight. I always, always enjoy uh, Yossi. Uh, he's um, a great guy who has a lot, a lot to speak about. Yossi has been uh, feted and uh, entertained and met and worked with uh, prime ministers and 
presidents and princes from around the world, the Pope, uh, dignitaries who he in, engages in his uh, unending quest to preserve nature, to preserve the bird migration fly route, to uh, conserve Israel's natural resources and the natural resources of this whole part of the globe for future generations. Um, Yossi is the former CEO of SPI. He was CEO in the early 90s for five years. Um, Yossi is a professor of matters. Uh, uh, hear me? We have somebody uh, not on mute there? Uh, um, I don't know. There is some feedback. I don't know why. That's weird. Okay. Um, Try again? Uh, yeah. It does, doesn't have to do with me speaking. What is that noise? So weird. Um, anyway, okay. <laughs> Hi, Maggie and Leon. Yes, anyway, Yossi, former CEO of SPI in the 90s. Now, there is feedback on me. I'm going to shut up. Um, Yossi's uh, been a professor of Tel Aviv University uh, studying birds, professor of zoology for five decades. For four decades, he's been uh, studying the barn owls and leading this incredible project he's going to talk about. Uh, and uh, Yossi's uh, study of bird migration fly routes, fly routes with the Air Force has uh, saved uh, billions of dollars in the lives of pilots uh, by reducing collisions um, greatly by 76%. Uh, his studies came out in 84% uh, 80, 84, 74 of, um, of collisions have been um, reduced. Uh, by plotting the fly routes of birds and having planes avoid them. So, so, so much interesting stuff in Yossi's life and he's gonna talk about. It. So thank you very much, Yossi. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jay, for introducing me. It's a great pleasure, happy Tu Bishvat to everyone uh, this evening in Israel and uh, lunchtime in, the, in North America. And, um, uh, as you know, I am already five decades studying bird migration, and I think the big slogan is uh, uh, migrating birds know no boundaries. And Israel is a, such a small country in a junction of three continents. We have over 500 million birds migrating twice a year over Israel, which is, of course, a big, a big advantage. Last week, you heard about our huge problem with the cranes and the, the, the bird flu in the Hula Valley in the north, uh, we, we still, uh, the, this is now reducing dramatically. But now in Tu Bishvat, I think that in Israel and in the uh, entire world, uh, even the COVID-19 knows no boundaries like the birds. And we hope very much that uh, it's going to uh, reduce right now, right now also in Israel. So happy to be to be shvat to everyone. As you know, to be shvat is the new year of the trees, and they, according to the Jewish tradition, uh, people are planting trees. I won't talk today on planting trees because it became a huge conflict in the Negev with planting trees, and I wanted immediately to go into uh, my presentation um, uh, talking about a, a, a very exciting. Uh, project which I'm leading now for four decades, and that's the issue of uh, uh, the, the, just a moment, I can't, I see that I cannot put it on a full screen. Just a moment, please. I don't know why I can't put it on a full screen. Maybe you can try to close PowerPoint and open it again. Ah, uh, maybe. Okay, so please give me the chance to go out again. I have to close the PowerPoint. Oh my God. I did work on our test run. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, uh, can, can you see the slide? Not yet. Share screen. Ah. Uh, can you see the slide on full screen? No, we cannot see it. Oh I'm going share the screen. Ah, okay. So what, one minute, let me see, what should I do? Share screen. Ah, okay. Oh my God. 
can see it to our God. I will do it from the beginning again. Okay, I apologize, one second. Can you see it now? We see your folder, your Windows uh, folder. We don't see the PowerPoint itself. Oh my God. You don't see the slide? No. Oh, so I apologize. Uh, we're almost seeing it. We see full screen, but it's actually black. Okay. So, by apologize, I close everything and start from the beginning again. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know if, what it's the, if it's the only thing open on your desktop, and then you just hit share screen, it'll come up. One second. Sorry. 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 I'll just say somebody asked a question about the Elad Bird Festival. Uh, Maybe somebody yeah, better, who knows better than I do, but I believe it's still it's still on, and there won't be any problem getting to Israel in uh, in March. I mean, there's already it's, it's, the skies are already going to be open, I believe, uh, and everybody's hoping uh, that things are going to be on for March. So, and Yossi, according Jay, according to the Elad Bird Festival website, it's on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we can find out if Yossi is the son of Ora Lesham. Yeah, I was trying to look it up online, but couldn't find the answer. <laughs> so I guess we'll wait for him to log back in. Is that what's happening? Okay. Well, hello, everybody. We did practice this. We we did, and it worked perfectly fine. Here he comes. Oh, he logged off again. Lost him again. Yeah. Here he comes back. Oh, perfect. Yossi, you just need to unmute yourself. Yossi, you're muted. Yossi. Yossi, you're muted. You can't hear me. Yossi, you're muted. Good boy. What happened? Yossi, you, okay. Okay, 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 let me know. We saw everything. It was full Every screen, but we couldn't hear you. Uh, can you see now and hear me? We can see you, but not your screen. But not the screen now. Oh my God! But we saw it two a minute ago. Yeah, but it, it was muted. I don't know why. That's a different button. Can you hear me? Yes. We hear you. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, so I really apologize and we start the presentation. We, we, we're not so, seeing the screen yet. You don't see the screen? Wow, what's going on? I try it again. You don't see the screen? No, Just you, you have screen share and you... Ah, okay. Can you see now? 
Yes. Yes. And you can hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So uh, now we start. Okay. It took some time. I really apologize. I don't know what happened. Well, so, meanwhile, meanwhile, we gained 50. We have two over 200 people on now, Yossi. So. Uh, okay. Very good. So I, I, I apologize 200 times and we start the presentation. So um, the, the main issue is how do you want to choose and see the Middle East? Do we want to see it on a way that you see it many times on the CNN, on the news? Or you want to see it on a way that we are doing it, trying to use the belt as a platform to get together Jews and Arabs, Israelis, Palestinian and Jordanian through the platform of the bells. And the question is, um, uh, how can you do it? And I, I always like to show this picture where you see the, the President uh, Bush in a big maneuver of the US Army standing like a builder with a binocular, but he forgot to remove the, the covers of his binoculars. It happened also to our Minister of Defense a few years ago. And the, the question is, what is our vision in those, all these activities? So what, we are, what I'm doing now for four decades, we started a big project in the Middle East, in, first in Israel, to try and use the barn owls as pest control agent uh, in agriculture fields. Because we had 500 million birds flying over Israel, we suffered seriously from um, um, uh, pesticides, which killed not only local wildlife, affected the people in Israel, but also uh, killed thousands of migrating birds, which flew over Israel from Europe and Western Asia. So the idea was very simple. The idea was to establish nesting boxes in the agriculture fields. And we found out that the barn owls are coming and, and uh, raising their chicks there. And as I told you already, you see that we are in a, in a junction, which is most important for the Palearctic bears over Israel. For example, if we are talking on migrating eagles, the entire world population of lesser spotted eagle, about 120,000 eagles are migrating over Israel twice a year in two weeks time. And uh, we, as uh, you might probably know, in North America, you have only two species of eagle. You have the golden eagle and the bald eagle, which is a national symbol of the United States. If you like eagles, you should come to Israel because in Israel, even we are such a small country, you can see 12 different species of eagle. You can see hundreds of thousands of migrating stocks flying over Israel twice a year, about 85% of the world population. The entire population of pelicans from Europe and Western Asia, about uh, 60,000 pelicans migrate over Israel. So uh, uh, the weather in Israel is also, even today it's a quite a rainy day, but we have a lot of uh, sunshine over Israel. So if you are bird lovers, Israel is really a paradise to come and enjoy the building. So uh, I want to tell you today how we use uh, the birds as a um, 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 uh, project that can get between the countries in the Middle East. With the first issue that we started was in 1996, when uh, we uh, started to attach satellite transmitters on the back of uh, 120 white stocks. Uh, we were fortunate at that time to get big funds from Angela Merkel, who was the Minister of uh, the Environment, and um, uh, we, the idea was to follow the migration. Now, when we got a one and a half million dollars from the German government to follow the German white stocks, I went to the, our Minister of Education and tried to convince him to establish a big website, which we are using till now, Bells.org IL. And the idea was that the students in the Israeli schools, in the Palestinian schools, and in the, in the Jordanian school can follow online the migrating bells under the title Migrating Bells, No, No Boundaries. And they can learn online how they are migrating from uh, Europe through Israel to South Africa. And uh, just to give you the, the impression how this works, we gave the, the bears a Jewish name, Christian name, and Muslim name. And here you can see one of the, the stalks, which was called Princessa, who moved from Germany through the Bosphorus over Israel, 
till Sudan. The, the husband, the male, was flying to Spain. She doesn't need him all the time with her. She stayed in Sudan along the Nile till the middle of November. And then in the middle of November, the bird moved till Cape Town, till the, the bottom line of the African continent. And the students in about 200 schools could follow online after the migrating stocks. This was, of course, a very exciting project that we started in 1998. And here you can see the stock flying back to the same nest year after year. We followed the same uh, princessa stock from Germany through Israel till her nest in Germany. And this was, of course, an outstanding and a breaking through project which I was privileged to lead together with Professor uh, Peter Bertolt from Germany under the title Migrating Birds Know No Boundaries. The American government, the USAID, also funded the, the joint venture with the Palestinian and Jordanian. And later on, after the, we had enough schools, we started in Beit Sha'an Valley on the border with uh, Jordan and where the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank is closed. And we brought to the fish ponds uh, students from the schools, getting them in triples of an Israeli student, a Palestinian student and a Jordanian student. They were spending few hours in bird watching. And then at lunchtime, they were preparing together the, the, the lunch. So this was a tool to get the students together to show you the sum up of the project, you can see here, every dot is a stock with a transmitter. The stocks from West Germany are moving over the Gibraltar to West Africa, and most of the other stocks are flying over the Middle East along the Great Rift Valley till South Africa. So this was, of course, an exciting educational project for students and children to follow the migrating birds and understand that the Middle East is one of the key points of a bottleneck, a highway for migrating birds. You can see that in the spring, they are flying back on the same route. So now we have in Israel 520 schools, and we are trying now to develop a system that also schools from the United States, which can follow bears. Here you can see a project of Cornell University, which followed waders which are migrating from Siberia to New Zealand and Australia. All of them stop in the Yellow Sea in China, which is a very important stop oversight. And then you, they fly, you see each dot is a bird with a transmitter to Australia and New Zealand. They winter there, and then in the spring again, they fly exactly like in the Middle East. They stop for a week in the Yellow Sea, and then they fly back to the nesting ground in Siberia. We have also vultures, griffin vultures, which we are putting radio transmitters, and then in the schools that you landed on them, here you can see one of the vultures, which is nesting in Jordan, in Vadidana, and it comes almost every day to feed in a Ramon crater in the Negev in a feeding station with some kosher meat. The big numbers cause, of course, problems for the Israeli Air Force. And unfortunately, before we started the study with the Air Force, the Israeli Air Force lost 11 aircraft, three pilots were killed, and they, we had 75 collisions above $1 million. So we started to follow the migration also with a with uh, uh, builders across the country, which were standing and counting the bears. We were using radars to follow the bird migration. And we had even a, a Russian general who made immigration in 1991, brought with him to Latrun, the Armour Memorial site, a, a weather radar, which we converted to a bird radar. So we could follow the bears on a, on a huge level of about 200 kilometers. And I was also using motorized glider to follow the bears and map the height of the thermals. We even used the drones, the unmanned aircraft, which as far as I know, this was the first time ever the, the drones were used for a positive purpose. And we made new maps for the Israeli Air Force to stop and fly on migration, on the migration route across Israel. And the number of collisions dropped down dramatically. Why I'm telling you the story of the Air Force? Because we had the plan at the end of the 90s, last century, 
to make a network of radars also in Turkey, Jordan, Egypt, and Israel, so we can uh, join forces also with the air forces. Unfortunately, in 1991, before the Second Intifada started, we brought uh, commanders of the Air Force from Jordan, Turkey, United States, and Greece to learn about our achievements. But because of the political situation, it didn't work. But when I summed up my study with the Israeli Air Force in a book in English too, in Hebrew and English, Flying with the Bears, we had a big event with our president, Weizmann, the late president, who was also the commander of the Air Force. And uh, I was really excited to learn that when President Weizmann finished his cadence in 2000, he flew to Jordan to meet His Majesty King Abdallah. And the official present to King Abdallah was the book Fly, uh, Flying with the Bird with the dedication of President Weizmann to King Abdallah, like the birds who know no boundaries, hopefully also we will do the same with us. But the main issue which I want to tell you today is the story of the barn owls that I told you we made the nesting boxes. This was not an original idea of the Israelis, but in Malaysia, they started to put 5,000 nesting boxes because they had the oil palm trees which were affected by the huge damage by rats which were climbing on the trees. And when they put the nesting boxes for the barn house, the number was reduced dramatically. So we started in a kibbutz, in a religious kibbutz in Beit Sha'an Valley, in Zdeliyaw, to put 14 nesting boxes for the barn house. And very fast we learned the barn house are coming. And from our studies, we learned that a pair of barn house with the chicks are eating about 2,000 to 6,000 uh, rodents per year. So the farmers who had nesting boxes uh, stopped to use pesticides. In 2008, it, it became a national project in Israel. And from 14 nesting boxes, we have now 5,000 nesting boxes in Israel, few hundreds in Jordan, and few hundreds in the Palestinian Authority. So in 2002, we invited the Jordanian and the Palestinian to join our activity. We made a lot of educational material for students and for farmers in Jordan and in the Palestinian Authority. As you can see in the poster, only Arabic, no Hebrew, because we didn't want to, uh, to get them stressed with politics. So everything was only in Arabic. And I think the big story was that also the Jordanian and the Palestinian reduced the use of pesticide on a high level. But the second point was, of course, that the people were meeting each other, the farmers, the conservationists, the scientists. And here you can see in front of the picture a, a farmer from Tirat, Kibbutz Tiratzvi, when he met his friends from Jordan and Palestine, immediately, very proudly, he brought the dates that he's growing and providing them the dates. And some of our, we have many seminars together to learn the system. And some of the seminars, you can see pictures, which again, you don't see in the news, where farmers from Jordan, Palestinian Authority in Israel are dancing together at the end of the seminar. And we even had events where on the border with Jordan, we have some nesting boxes. We have already five events where the male or the female was Israeli and the and the male or the female, the partner was a Jordanian one. And a few years ago, we had even by, by Gemia, we have one male with two females, which raised 19 chicks uh, together. Just imagine how one male should bring food for two ladies and 19 chicks. This is not an easy job. So the project with the Barn House became a big national project in Israel. We brought even a Mr. Shimon Peres, who was the president of Israel, to see the project in the field. And our partner from Jordan was the general from the right side, which you can see shaking the hand with his majesty, King Hussein, the late King Hussein. And he established um, uh, the general Mansour Abu Rashid from Jordan, established um, a center in Amman. It's called Amman Center for Peace and Development. And he did it on the left side with General Baruch Spiegel, who was his partner in the peace treaty in 1994. And here you can see on the left side, General Mansu 
with Mr. Rabin, uh, President Clinton, President Weissman, His Majesty King Hussein, and uh, Baruch Spiegel signing the peace treaty in Jordan uh, 26 years ago. Exactly yesterday was 26 ago on the meeting. So uh, Mansur Abu Rasha, the general, had to convince his partners, the farmers in Jordan, that for the Muslim, the, the Barnaus are an, an omen which brings bad luck. He convinced them the Barnaus are bringing good luck. And they, they were convinced. And here you can see the team of the Jordanian uh, uh, researchers who are monitoring the nest boxes in Jordan. They have already 380 nest boxes. And you can see they are even wearing very proudly the T-shirt which we produce for the Israeli farmers. So the Barnaus are getting the people together. So we convinced not only the farmers, we were lucky to bring nine years ago, uh, uh, General Mansur Abu Rashid to the Knesset, to the Israeli parliament, and to give their a lecture to the members of the Knesset. We even produced an exhibition which hanged in the Knesset for two months. And you can see on the right side, uh, the speaker of the Knesset at that time, uh, Mr. Ruby Rivlin, who just uh, was last year uh, the president of Israel. And on the left side, you can see uh, uh, the minister of environment, uh, Gilad Erdan, who is now the ambassador to the United Nations in the States. So we just made this big event in the Knesset. And together now with the Jordanian, not only the Barnhaus, but even other issues, for example, on the border of Jordan, we have two, 22 bunkers. Till the peace treaty, the bunkers uh, were used by the army. Now when the army left it, we, we, they are a big uh, place for beds to stay and hang. So the soldiers who are on the Rift Valley, they made the facilities for beds. We have 32 species of beds in Israel, and this became an excellent uh, living site from global endangered deaths in the Great Rift Valley on the border of Jordan. And of course, that's another sample how even the armies can join forces. And here you can see the general again with an officer from the IDF, from the Israel army in the bunkers. The general learns how we did it with the best to do it in Jordan. A few years ago, we had also a big event in the Dead Sea, as you know, the Dead Sea is dying out because the, all the water is used by the Syrian, Jordanian, and Israelis in the Jordan River, and the the the, the companies in the thousand part are totally uh, destroying the Dead Sea. So we wanted to bring the Dead Sea to life through art and music, and uh, what we did, we brought. 25 top artists from all over the world. They were sitting in Israel on the Israeli side of the Dead Sea and painting the wildlife around the Dead Sea in Israel. And then we moved to Jordan and did the same six days in Jordan. And here you can see 160 Jordanian students joined our uh, uh, painters together with the general and others. And they learned about the problem of the Dead Sea and they joined the, the the, the people who were painting in that. I want to show you now a short a video clip about this event, which was amazing. We also produced a book.
You so you know we're not hearing audio. You, you also, you know, we're not hearing this at all. Ah, you don't hear the video. No, we haven't heard. Okay, that. sorry. Okay, apologize. Okay, so as I said, instead of killing the the migrating bears, uh, and uh, we we spread over uh, with thousands of nesting boxes, and as you can see in every box, you can see uh, every time uh, tens and tens of rodents, and. Uh, uh, these are also done by the Palestinians and changing their mind about the house. And suddenly you can see Palestinian farmers smiling, holding the barn house, putting nest boxes. And we have even in the schools joint activities between, for example, in the Negev, uh, Bedouins together with Israeli students sitting and analyzing palace. You know that the house, they are vomiting the 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 pellets with the bones and the skull of the rodents and they are sitting together and analyzing the rodents and the, for them is, as you see here on the right side it's like the kinder eggs it's always surprised what they can find in it in the last uh, seven years also um, uh, cyprus and greece joined this activity there is a lot of use of pesticides and hunting in Cyprus. And we met with the Minister of Agriculture and Environment of Cyprus and also in Greece. And as you can see in Greece, they made like the Society for the Protection of Nature. They made a, a new NGO to, to use the barn house as a biological pest control agent. Also Switzerland joined the activity with Professor Alex Roulen from Lausanne University who is a world expert of barn house. And as I said, the barn house are now replacing the piece of that. We made many seminars abroad. And for example, in, uh, in uh, Davos, in the World Economic Forum, we gave a presentation together with the Palestinian and Jordanian and uh, the, the people from Switzerland, which was a high success there. And Shimon Peres gave his uh, patronage on uh, this event. Uh, we made meetings with the um, ambassador of Jordan in that, and a um, few years ago, the president of, um, of uh, Switzerland organized a day in a big farm in, um, in Switzerland with all the ambassadors from, um, from uh, all over the world in Switzerland, which were uh, 
which were uh, coming to learn about the Barnals. You see here the president of Switzerland with a general from Jordan and me, and uh, with, we, in other forums. And the most exciting point was that after Switzerland, the, the ambassador from the Vatican was highly impressed and got us a meeting in the Vatican with the Pope. This Pope, uh, Pope Francis, is really uh, interested in protecting the globe. And we, we've been there together with the Jordanian Palestinian uh, friends. And he highly appreciates that what we are doing about the story of the Barnaus, as I said, bringing the peace instead of uh, uh, the dove. On the left side, you see, we have to cover the face of the Palestinian partner because of the political sensitivity. So the, the issue became a, just a big story. And last, uh, last year, fortunate enough, we, following the, the, the peace treaty with Morocco and Israel, we found a professor from Morocco, Professor Imad Shikawi, who is also an ecologist, who got very excited to join it. And he came to Jordan to learn about what we are doing together. He came to uh, Expo in Dubai together with us. And uh, he is starting now the project in Morocco. Uh, our um, ambassador, Dr. David Gubrun, is supporting us. And if it works well, he will be our uh, ambassador to join this activity also in Tunisia, Algeria, and, in, and Egypt. Even Tunisia and Algeria has no peace treaty with Israel. So now that's the situation in Europe. We hope it become and spread all over. And uh, I just want to tell you another amazing story. We hosted uh, two years ago an astronaut, Ricky Arnold, who is also a keen builder. And he was uh, 195 days in the International Space Station. And he also helping us now to get this uh, information all over the world. And uh, hopefully next year we are going to host um, uh, Jessica Meyer. Her father is Jewish and she was also 205 days on space. She's an ornithologist. She made her PhD on diving on, on penguins and also study on um, uh, Indian geese who fly in this height of 20,000 feet with almost no oxygen. And she is very keen to come for an entire week and help us on this regional cooperation. And uh, hopefully we are going to do it the same. Uh, and last but not least, what I want to tell you was our visit uh, to in October to the Expo in Dubai. We were privileged to start the first week in the huge complex of Expo. We came there uh, in Expo with a team from uh, the Palestinian Authority, Switzerland, Jordan, and Morocco. And these are, as you can see, our team who are leading it on the regional activity. And there was a really high interest. And we were fortunate enough to invite the minister of uh, environment and climate change from Dubai to learn about regional activity. She got us to, uh, together to meet with our Minister of Environment, uh, Tamar Zandberg, who also uh, came at the same first week to the Expo in Dubai. And uh, you can see our team together with our minister and the two ministers together. And we gave her our material. And on the other day, she invited us to meet her general secretary of the ministry. And hopefully the Emirates are now also coming to join our activity. They have in the Emirates million of palm trees which problems with the rats who are making damage to the, to the dates. And we are hoping that in the coming year in 2022, also the Emirates are going to join our activity. So uh, this was of course the Abraham a new peace treaty was a big chance for us to come also to the Gulf and join forces with the Emirates. Uh, because time is running out, uh, after we have been there, uh, the, the Professor Chikaf in Morocco put already in two weeks, eight uh, uh, paper clips and video programs and our partners from uh, the whole region last month 
came for five days to Israel to learn what is going on in Israel. Here you can see them in Kibbutz Deliyahu with a nesting box. And here you can see them with our Minister of Environment, Mr. Isawi Fresh, who is an Arab. And he got very excited to learn about uh, what we are doing together with the region and already promised to fund uh, our uh, project in the coming few years. And later on, uh, last month, we were privileged also to be hosted by President uh, Isaac Herzog, our new president, together with his wife, uh, Michal. And you can see him here sitting with the general on his left side and with the professor from Morocco on the right side. And he got he's flying to the Emirates at the end of this month. And he already got background material to help us and get them connected to this project. The, the professor from uh, Greece got very excited with his new NGO. And again, the meeting with the president was for him a life experience and about 20 paper clips and TV programs were done there. So to sum up, I think the story of the barn house in the nesting boxes became a new issue in the Middle East. And you can see here an amazing picture with three Muslims in the middle is the minister of environment, Asawi Fresh. On his right side is Professor Abed Gra, who is head in the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, he is from, uh, uh, from Jat, also an Arab. And on the left side, for the first time ever, as you know, I am a retired professor in Tel Aviv University. Our dean is also an Arab from Taibe, Professor uh, Abed Azam. And all of them are holding barn owl in Kibbutz De Liao, where we took them to see our work in the field. And uh, the Minister of uh, Envi uh, Regional Cooperation, after the visit, was so happy that he wrote a blog and wrote there, only Yossi Leshem can get three Muslims hide on a high uh, position, holding a barn house and smiling instead of having problems. The message to take home, I think that if we are thinking out of the box, and that's what we are trying to do, like the boxes of the barn house, you can succeed. And I think that what I heard once from uh, Shimon Perez, the late Shimon Perez, which really impressed me, if you want to run fast, run alone. If you want to run far, run together. And that's what we are doing. We want to run far, and we are running together. And I want to finish with a clip, which I hope it will work, which I just got uh, two weeks ago from the American army. They showed, you see, the army are joining the block like this, the Navy below, and because I work so much with the Air Force, not like the Marines, you see what the Air Force are doing. If you're thinking out of the box. <laughs> so thank you very much for your patience. I again apologize for the be beginning, which didn't work well. And we are now open for questions, which uh, Jay will uh, just raise, and I'll be more than happy to reply. Thank, thank you so much, Yossi. I never get tired of this. That is an incredible project. You're an incredible presenter. The, the videos are incredible. Just as a first thing, people really want to hear the sound of that video. Can you give us a link so that when we upload the uh the uh th this webinar is recorded and will be uploaded uh by tomorrow on our website i sent the, i put the link in the chat and on everybody's email invitation where you registered for the webinar there's a button on most of our communications that say uh for all uh, to register for upcoming webinars and recorded webinars so but leo if we upload it to there the video sound didn't work so can we get the video with the sound yeah, yeah. It, I don't know why it didn't work, but I, I, you, yeah, of course you have it with okay. this. Great. So let me let me just. There's a bunch of questions about the uh, barn owl. Uh, is the barn owl indigenous to Israel? No, the barn owl. In in fact, and that's the big story. The barn owl is a co cosmopolitical bird. It's nesting all over the world except in Antarctica. So oh. it's in the States and it's in Europe and it's in Asia, but in Israel. The barn owls, they prefer to feed in agriculture fields. And because there are so many, such a big amount of agriculture fields in Israel, when we started the project, 
we found out at the beginning we we thought that we have to bring the barn house from the zoo, but then we found out when you are they are lack, lacking of uh, nesting sites. If you put them the boxes, they come by themselves. And as I said, we have now five thousand nesting boxes. In some years, when there are a lot of rodents around, we have about four thousand pairs of barn house in Israel. Fascinating. Are there other birds that exist on all the continents, the same species of bird? Yeah, there are, of course, there are, for example, long-eared owls and other owls which are also eating the rodents. But the barn owls, you know, the name barn owls uh, came out from that, that they, are, they like to nest near people. I mean, they were in the past, they were nesting on the barns or on the old buildings, on the churches. Nowadays, in the modern building, the main problem of the barn owls, they don't have barn. They don't have a place to nest. So if you put the nesting site, you attract them again to the field, and then they reduce dramatically the number of the pests. So somebody asked, when the fledglings leave the nest, how do they find where to live? Where do, what if they're on the Ah, nest? Okay, that, that's a good question. And we have now, because I, in the beginning, I lost a few minutes with my uh, technical problems. We have now a study in the Beit Sha'an Valley led by uh, Dr. O. Spiegel and the PhD student Shlomo Kain. We are putting radios on the barn house. This year, we put already uh, 92 radios. And we found out that after they leave the nesting box, they disperse. They fly up to 60, 100 or 200 kilometers from the nest and they are looking for new nesting sites. Or if a male is dying out in the pair, immediately a young guy will come and replace the male. So if you put the radios, you can see very well that they are going and finding new nesting places. Unfortunately, we learned now when we put the radios that for example, the young birds after they leave the nest and they are not so experienced with flight, about 15% are hit by cars on highways because wow. they don't know how to escape. So 15% are killed by fast moving uh, roads along the, the roads. Interesting. Um, Nomi Ross wants to know, Yossi, are there any opportunities for English speakers to do some short-term volunteering in this project? Yeah, yeah. If people want to volunteer in that project, we have to know in advance, of course. We have to see if we got a background of biology. But if they wanted to help us to work in the field, just write to me or write to the to Jay, and we will get contact and we will see if you can get you for but at least if you have a volunteer, it cannot just come for five or six days. We need it at least for one month. Okay. Thanks. So contact us. Uh or um, Avi in Canada, Robin in New York, whatever email you have, uh, happy to talk to you and uh, hook you up with Yossi. Um, um, is, uh, Joella wants to know, uh, is it hard? How do you hold a barn owl? Is it, does a barn owl allow that? I, I was also wondering, all these amateur, all these politicians. Yossi, okay. Now okay. I'm a little bird in the JBO. I, so I tell you a funny story. First of all, if you're a biologist, then if you catch a barn owl, you hold it. You have to hold it with the wings and the both legs in your hand and that they cannot move. Otherwise, they have the talons. You know, the talons are the yeah. which they are catching the rodents. And if they are catching you with the talons, you know, the, the, the raptors, also the, the owls and the the, 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 the June and raptors, the, the talons are very strong and the fingers are strong. And uh, um, when we hosted the... Uh, President Shimon Peres in Bejan Valley to show him our original project. My friend in Kibbutz De Liao, who is uh, leading the project with me for 40 years, Shauli Aviel, was supposed to give Shimon Peres to hold the owl for the picture. But Shauli Aviel is a very a humble guy, and, and Shimon Peres is not experienced with barn owls. So he had to get the hand of the president and put him the owl in the hand, but he was afraid to catch the hand of the president. So he just gave him the owl and immediately the owl, the barn owl, caught Shimon Peretz in one finger and immediately the finger was bleeding. And um, okay, and Shimon Peretz, as you know, had a very good sense of humor 
And he immediately said, and we had about 200 people standing around. He said, you see, now Yossi Leshem wants also to kill me. With the... <laughs> but then after we left, immediately, you know, Shimon Peres had always a paramedic with him. He called me and said, listen, Yossi, he was a, a, a hit by the talons and we need immediately the out to see if he doesn't have something that he caused a, a disease to Shimon Peres, to our president. So I told him, listen, don't worry. We are working with the house for years now. If Mr. Perez has a tetanus injection, then it's no problem at all. So the, the son-in-law of Shimon Perez is a very famous professor, uh, Professor Valdan, who is also who was taking care of Shimon Perez. So after 15 minutes, Mr. Professor Valdan called me, Yossi, what's the story with the Barnos? I told him, listen, I am not a, a physician. I am not an authority. But I told him, Mr. Tetanus, you don't worry. So he told me, let me check. He go immediately to the literature. And, told, and then he called me, said, Yossi, you can be a physician. Exactly, that's the solution. Nothing to worry about our president. But you have to know how to hold the owls. It's not a big story. And as you know, the feathers of the owls, they are very quiet. And, they are, they are, uh, and so they, 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 the rodents cannot hear when they are coming and landing from above. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, we're glad that never made the news. That yeah, he, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, he didn't like leave with a finger of Shimon Peres or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, what did barn owls eat besides rats? Ah, okay. So not that they eat rodents. They rodents, eat, besides uh, rodents. Yeah, mainly voles. You know, the big number voles. of feeding mm -hmm. is voles in the agriculture fields because the voles have the ability in the rodents. You know, for example, a female of a vole, she can every 21 days produce about six uh, small uh, cups. So uh, they are eating mainly rodents. 95% we found out that they are eating rodents. Um, uh, mainly three species of rodents, one of them as red and house rat and then the bones. But in the Negev, for example, the Archibutsim in the Arava Valley, like Chaseva uh, uh, or Enya, Botsopar, there we don't uh, permit to put boxes. Why? Because some years when the number of rodents are very low, they started to leave the agriculture fields and they start to get a rodents in the wild, and oh. we have no second rodents, you know. So we don't want them to kill the wild the rodents in the wild, in nature reserves. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we are just using them in big agriculture fields. And from our studies, we have all the time, stay. we made already three PhD and eight master degrees on the barn house, oh. and 95% are the rodents who are only in agriculture fields. Great. But, you know, see, we were running out of time, so just some quick answers to these questions. Yeah, okay. Uh, would it be possible to do this project in North and South America, and does it exist in North and South America? Yeah, yeah. In California, for example, many, many nesting boxes are already there. They, we want to make it now in uh, Argentina. They approached us, and they wanted to do it in their big uh, open land in fields, so there is a big chance to do it also in North and South America, for sure. Okay. Um, what are the unique features of the boxes of the bo themselves? Anything special? Is it just a box? Oh, you just have to ask. Uh, the big issue is in Beit She'an Valley, it's one of the hottest places in Israel. You know, in the summer, it comes up to 45 degrees Celsius in the shade. So 110, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Okay, so when we started, we were not aware of this, but then we started and they, we made them nesting boxes with three, the, like the, the top... Uh, uh, um, uh, houses of people with four directions of wind. We have a double roof, so the wind and they can cool them, and then the chicks don't die out in such a hot way. But they just need a, 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 a hole because they were nesting in cavities, so they just need a box with a big place to stand in front and a place for the chicks to stay and grow up. No, very, not special. Fascinating. We, um, and we can, we, can, we can send uh, anyone who wants to make a nesting box in the agriculture field, we can send him how to build the box, which is the ideal one. Um, Ellen Fine has a very long question about the metaphor of war and rage and peace. And I I don't even, I, I think maybe Ellen, if you write to us separately, Yossi can begin to answer that. Um, 
uh, does can barn owls do they live in cities as well? Oh, okay. That, very good question. You know, uh, Ron Khuldai from the mayor of Tel Aviv, they I I didn't know about it, but they got every year in the information center about 11,000 phone calls about rats and rodents in Tel Aviv. And he wanted to use the barn owls also uh, in Tel Aviv. So we put 50 nesting boxes in Tel Aviv and we found out only one was occupied by barn owls and one who was open to agriculture field. So in big towns, it doesn't work. They need open land and agriculture field. Fascinating, fascinating. Um... Okay, I'm moving over to the uh, chats here. Uh, is there any concern of the owl overpopulation of the owls? No, that, okay, another good question. They have their own balance, what means, you know, they, some people, you know, there is the item bird brain on something, someone stupid, they said they got the bird brain. The owls have a very special brain and they can measure if they have a winter like now with a lot of rain and a lot of grass and a lot of rodents, they will they will lay eight to 12 eggs and raise 12 chicks. But if there is a year with not much rain and not much rodent, they will only lay two to three or four eggs, not more. And many of them will not nest at all. So they can measure what is going to happen in the future and they raise the chicks according to the number of rodents in. Wow, very interesting. Um, okay, people, a lot of people want the film. We said we're gonna, we're gonna upload both the, um, the video of this and, the, and a link to the film itself uh, on our website and we'll be sending out uh, and the next email you get from us, there'll be a donate, there'll be a link to those webinars, but the one that you got, uh, even the reminder you got today, but the one you resigned up for uh, a few days ago has that link. So you can find this thing online uh, soon, by tomorrow, I believe. Um, somebody wants to know, how did the mallard duck get to Israel? We're gonna end a couple more questions. We're respecting- uh, The question is, Mallard ducks are very common in Israel. For example, in, only in the Hula Valley, they estimate that they have 25,000 mallard ducks there. Wow. In fact, the, the bird flu is affecting also the ducks because all these water birds are affected, not only the, the cranes, but some other species too. Okay. Um, I didn't, I mean, the, the bird flu though, Yossi, we're way over the peak of that. Is that correct? Again, the, we're over the peak of the bird flu. They're pretty much removed the carcasses and that hopefully is behind us that outbreak. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some people said, let's stop uh, feeding now the cranes in the Hula Valley, but they don't stop to feed because if they would stop to feed, they will go all over Israel and bring the flu all over Israel. I just learned this afternoon in the last week, 18,000 cormorants died out from bird flu in South Africa, 18,000. Again, 18, cormorants, wow. Cormorants, 18,000 cormorants died in uh, in South Africa. And a few weeks ago, uh, about 4,000 barnacle geese in uh, Scotland. So this is not an issue of feeding, it's an issue of the birds who are coming in big flocks and living together, there the, the bird flu is uh, spreading much faster. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I also just want to mention you a couple times you mentioned Asawi Frage is the Minister of Environmental Protection. Yes. Uh, of course, that's Tamar Zandberg. No. Asawi Frage is the Minister of Regional Cooperation. Regional Cooperation, yeah, yeah, of course. He's the Regional Cooperation. And Tamar Zandberg is the Minister of Environment. Environmental Protection. And Asawi Frege, uh, as you just sent us yeah. a couple of days ago, the first project that he announced that he was going to uh, advance in terms of regional cooperation was the Burn Owl Project. So yeah. that's. Uh, that's amazing. And and you know, again, I want to tell you, I met him the first time in the in the office, and he really didn't understand what I really talking on. But then after a month, we took him in the field together and he saw everything in me, and suddenly he got caught totally. And now he is really wow. to lead. He's funding the SPNI for the project, and he's really doing a great job. And I, I salute him that so fast he understood how important it's not only an environmental issue getting people together. I, I, think, um, um, I want to thank all of you again for the opportunity to tell you my story. And again, I apologize for the very uh, complicated beginning of this uh, presentation. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Yossi. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Still 170 people with us. We had uh, over 210 at the peak and uh, um, appreciate very much. In two weeks, the same time, uh, Sunday night, two weeks from now, the 30th, uh, Professor Alon Tal, member of Knesset, one of Israel's leading environmental activists, historic figure in Israel's environmental movement, will be with us talking about uh, the sixth extinction event and can Israel avoid it for its own biodiversity and some other fascinating issues. So please join us in two weeks. We'll be sending registration links for that. Uh, share with your friends um, and write us for any of the questions we didn't get to answer. Uh, I, uh, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that we can uh, we will we will try to answer your questions uh, individually, Ellen uh, as well. Uh, the uh, the uh, question about war and peace that you asked. Sorry, didn't get to it. Um, but thank you all very much, and we will see you again. Um, we will see you again in. Uh, in two weeks. Thanks so much and thanks to all our supporters. Thanks everybody for joining.